Good morning, everyone, and welcome to episode seven of SDGC's Final Fantasy Retrospective, in which we are going back over every single one of the 15 mainline Final Fantasy games and talking about what we loved and what we didn't love and why we love them so much, There, because it's just an amazing series. And as always, I'll go over the rules. Of course, we are only talking about the mainline series here. We're not talking about games like Tactics or any of the 10 sequels or 13 sequels. Uh, those will be discussed at a later date. We are only focusing on the 15 core Final Fantasy titles. And once again, we are joined by our friend Natalie. Natalie Flores from RPG site and also an intern at Pace. So Natalie, thank you for joining us once again. Hello everyone. Thank you for having me. And I'm sure it's 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 just so like like full disclosure to the audience, we are recording these one after the other. So like I know like Natalie's probably like, oh God, he's gonna introduce me like three more times after this. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> We're not Lord. wearing the same clothes week after week. Like we I actually promise. like I, I I thought about changing my clothes real quick between each one just to like to, like shake it up, but I was like, no, that's that uh, that's pointless. Too much work. The rest so, of us are just schlubby. Being episode seven, of course, we are talking about Final Fantasy seven, um, which is uh, like similar to six in the sense that it is also at the top of many people's lists as favorite in the series. Um, however, uh, I expect this to be there are going to be some very divergent opinions uh, on this podcast regarding seven. Uh, and I'm looking forward to the discussion. So um, I really liked the format we did for six in which we go around the horn and we talk about our, you know, what we love about the game, our characters, you know, our favorite or least favorite moments. Um, and uh, Final Fantasy VII was the first of the PlayStation era uh, JRPGs. And Final Fantasy VII caused a lot of waves when it was first announced um, because up until then, Square, it was Squaresoft. It wasn't even Square Enix at that point. It was Squaresoft. And Squaresoft had a very symbiotic relationship with Nintendo. I mean, these two were joined at the hip. Um, Final Fantasy was practically a first a, a first party Nintendo franchise because that is that is you know for years that is what everybody played SquareSoft games on was was you know all Nintendo systems Chrono Trigger Final Fantasy all those games Secret of Mana uh, Secret of Evermore and then when uh, Square when I keep wanting to say Square Enix when SquareSoft learned that uh, Nintendo was staying with cartridges as opposed to discs they realized that that would not help them uh that would not fit within the scope of their vision for what they wanted final fantasy 7 to be and so they made a very public very messy split with nintendo that wasn't healed that rift wasn't healed for i want to say like a decade afterward like they it was a they long time it was a very long time uh that there was a huge rift between uh square and nintendo over this but final fantasy 7 ended up being one of the like you know regardless of people's feelings on it it is re remains one of the most influential not just JRPGs but in most influential games of all time because it introduced the western like you know, the western world really to to Final Fantasy like Final Fantasy 6 was a very popular game but Final Fantasy 7 kind of found this had this cultural zeitgeist going on of you know like well you know this you know this is you know you know there's all these great games being uh being made in japan and we're not getting them and final fantasy 7 really made people sit up and say wow we want more of this like this is amazing from a visual standpoint from a storytelling standpoint and so final fantasy 7 remains one of the most influential games of all time in my opinion um but there are a lot of spicy opinions about Final Fantasy VII that we need to discuss as well. And so um, while I did state that Final Fantasy VII is at the top of many people's uh, list in regards to their favorite in the series, Natalie, that is not the case for you. No, it's at the bottom for me. Ooh, wow. So, so I'm near the bottom. Not not at the very, very bottom. That's Final Fantasy XII, but yes. seven is around now there. Now we know why she's part of the show. So this is <laughs> that, that this is why I brought her on. So 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 Natalie, what is it about Final Fantasy VII that does not resonate with you? Um, the characters didn't really resonate with me besides Aerith or Eris, whatever you prefer. Um, Sephiroth didn't do anything for me. Uh, it's really awkward being in a distant world concert and everyone just like loses their minds when At Sephiroth's one... theme comes on. I'm sitting there like, I'm the only one just kind of like, <laughs> yeah, yes, I'm fine. And I just like start mouthing the words, but it's not something that I'm really into. Uh, but yeah, it, it just didn't click for me. I don't know why. Um, when Aerith died, that was kind of it for me. Like I lost all interest. Um, well, what's interesting is that there's such a such a dichotomy between a character like Cloud and a character like Locke, for example. Because um, Cloud is really the first Final Fantasy protagonist in a series of Final Fantasy protagonists following him that were like, I don't care, whatever. It's just a job. I don't care. 
don't care about anything. Um, and and for the first half of the game, like I will freely admit, like that's super off putting, right? Because I want a character who's invested. I want a character who who is trying to shape the world around him, and that's just not what Cloud is there for. Um, uh, he's not interested in in any of that. Um, although I do appreciate the fact that Final Fantasy VII was really, I, I think, and guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but the first JRPG to feature an African American as a as a main party member. It was certainly uh, the first mainstream one. Um, yeah. I, I I'm sure somebody will be able to come up in the comments and be like, "Well, here's this Japan only, you know, for Wonder Swan or whatever." But like, <laughs> you know, I, it, it was certainly the first mainstream one and and kind of stereotypical as barrett is to he some degree pretty, yeah like aesthetically pretty. and like his voice patterns are are coded a little bit stereotypically well, but, 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 but so here's something that people may not realize uh, did anybody here play the the demo of final fantasy 7 um when that was back released in the day. back in the day so so in the demo barrett's barrett's language like his his manner of speaking was actually far more um stereo like it just it no, was tell me it wasn't like, like full-on ebonics please. oh no 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 dude he was like they literally spelled it like he would call people foo oh. but they, he was basically he was they mr. cut out the t. l yeah he was mr t they it cut was, out the l and, and so it was just it was just yo people. cloud come on foo and i was like oh man yeah like, and they i'm so glad they, they fixed that <laughs> they fixed it but but man oh man like go back and look at youtube uh a gameplay of the actual final fantasy 7 demo and he was like the most stereotypical African American character you could possibly think of, and it was. And to this day, like when you look at it, it is fucking cringe. Like, oh man, like thinking about it gives me hives. Um, so they did, they did clean that up. But but I agree. Like you know, like it, it feels like a compromise with Barrett's character, right? Like he's the first major African American JRPG character, and I appreciate that. But at the same time, you know, there was still a lot of stereotyping going on with his yeah. character. Um, and I think, I think, I think, you know, regardless of your feelings on the game, I think everybody could probably, could probably agree with that. Um, Rebecca, you were somebody else who didn't like Final Fantasy seven. Yeah, I didn't beat it. Um, I actually wasn't going to be on this particular podcast cause I only played like maybe like 10 hours That's of true. it. You're here. Um, I think I got to, I, I got past the escape from Midgar, um, but not very much further. Than oh, wow. That. You didn't get into the game. Yeah. Like, wow. You quit three, about four hours in. I, no, I feel like I played more than that. Maybe I didn't. Um, maybe maybe I'm mistaking how long Midgar because because like the opening getting out of Midgar can, can take quite a while. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I played it. I mean, I'm pretty thorough. Like I talk to everybody. I I go around. But um, I mean, my my philosophy with and I said this on the Final Fantasy VI cast too. Like I games games gotta age well for me and final fantasy 7 did not age well i didn't play it until a couple years ago um i picked it up originally at like uh just like is it i got a used copy and i played it like a, a 24 hour gaming night i was doing with some friends and i i hated it but i decided to, i kept pushing on because i was like this is a really important game like people love it and i i got like a little bit past escape from midgar and i was just like you know what i'm just not feeling it um i I, it moves the controls just move badly for me i i hate i hate the feeling of moving through this game um we talked in the final fantasy 6 cast about how well the writing has aged i feel like the writing in this game is just shit like the translation I, of final fantasy 7 was far worse I, than i i don't like any of the characters um it's, i didn't it, find any of them interesting it's weird as hell like the whole thing in like don corneo's mansion at the beginning like what the fuck was that about oh yeah um like, like uh, your, your barrett's coding is very weird um well, that whole section in don corneo's mansion came across as extremely transphobic oh and, god yeah, yeah. It's, it's very weird and uh, i mean like tifa and Aerith are i mean it, like, again in comparison to like tara and celeste just like oh save me kind of characters <laughs> yeah. from yeah. from the sections that i played and i just got it to, and, and cloud is so boring jesus for, for most of the game and he, he doesn't is... really get much better like he gets better no. but even the degree to which he gets better he's still not much of a like give um, me no, some non-generic so personality traits about cloud by the end of the game like guys, what is he guys he has a big sword so he he's does the big yeah. hair big hair he's got the big spiky hair and the yeah. big guys, sword guys his design is so cool how can why care about his character and personality and actions when he has a cool design come on no, what's it just, cool yeah. it just bored me and i i got i got like however many hours and i got maybe i'm exaggerating maybe it wasn't quite 10 but i got however many hours and i got and i just after if you can't hook me a few hours in like i don't i don't care if eris dies and you know everything's 
like dramatic later on. I don't, I don't care. I didn't like this game. Yeah. And that's Here's... fair because a lot of people insist that you have to finish a game in order to yeah. form a proper opinion on it. Yep. That's I've bullshit. No, if a game can't times. keep you long enough, yeah. Time, no, it's, that's yeah. valid. Yeah. Well, if you can't bring yourself to finish it, then that's something on the game, right? The game has to give you a reason to stick around. I have a finite so. amount of hours in my entire life, and I yeah. don't want to waste, you know, 40 of them playing something that I don't like. Well, and what's interesting is that, you like, so for me, Final Fantasy VII is in my top five, right? Like, like I would I would throw that up there in my top five. I really like I really like Final Fantasy VII. Um, and I think it holds, I actually think it holds up better than visually than eight in a weird way, um, simply because I don't like the huge mm -hmm. realistic characters. Um I don't think that meshes well with with the with the PS one graphical style. Um, having said that, like looking back on it, it's interesting. Like, because I was seven sixteen when Final Fantasy seven came out, and you know, I didn't pick up on all the the kind of I guess issues with the game that I do now. Like, because I mean, we've already mentioned like you know there are parts of the game that are very transphobic. There are parts of the game that are very homophobic. Um, when you talk about characters like Mookie. Um, there are, there are parts of the game that are, that depict women as just, you know, damsels in distress. Um, like, you know, I, I don't know how many times, uh, you have to save Tifa and Aerith, uh, in the game. Uh, uh, and it's so and you have to weird. Save, and when you have to save them from like rapey ass Don Corneo or Don Corneo Good twice, God. twice. It's so weird up following game. up five and six where five had this really interesting, like kind of potential conversation about like trans or gender fluid people with Ferris who like, Ferris, yeah. okay, maybe it's just a disguise, but maybe, you know, but maybe it's kind of not like it's, it's really never fully clarified how Ferris actually views herself, himself, themselves, um, you know, and that was like a very interesting, like being willing to put that out there without really hard coding it is actually kind of realistic. Um, and then six, of course, has has these incredible female characters and then seven comes along and, you know, kind of shits all over it. Yeah, yeah. a little um, bit. <coughs> well, and, and that is why. It is interesting to go back and play Final Fantasy VII and realize that, you know, from transphobia to homophobia to its kind of stereotypical stereotypical depiction of African Americans, is that it 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 is inherently a very problematic game, um, you know. So it's and it's so in that regard, it makes it really hard for me to to talk about the things that I do love about it, uh, because there are quite a few good things about Final Fantasy VII. I I still feel like the materia system is one of the best. Uh, uh, one of the best systems in the entire series for actually learning skills and abilities and magic. Um, you can actually Finn. <laughs> Finn. Yes, Finn. Finn, would you? Is there something you'd like? To Interrupt add? him, Finn. No, I, I. I'll wait until I go over my intro piece for this game. No, please, no. Let's hear it now. I'm curious. Hit okay, him. Can I do my intro? Oh, wait, piece? Finn hasn't talked yet. Finn, talk. Do yeah. it, Finn. Finn, jump in. Finn, stop, stop jump raising. Stop talking. Don't let that man dominate this conversation. Stop, ra stop raising your hand and just fucking interrupt. Oh, me, my God. Okay. The first thing I want to say is coming off of Final Fantasy VI, where it had some of the, the best female characters with like really good agency, and then Seven devolved into the most tired trope ever, which is we've killed the female to motivate the male. Uh, Threw her in a fridge. Uh, oh. yep. Anyway. Uh, seven, here's the thing. At the time, I enjoyed Seven. Uh, it, it was, it was visually spectacular. FMV had never been done before. As a product of its time, as I was playing it, I was like, this is really good. Not as good as what I played last, a couple of years ago with Six, but this one's, this one's fun. But this did not age well. I, I do not agree when people claim this is the not only the best Final Fantasy, but one of the best games of all time. It's but that's not the point. John wanted to hear about the materia system. And I mentioned that I was going to bring this up as part of six and why I love six so much. Seven killed off the individual character in Final Fantasy games. Yeah, I did. Seven yep. That's was good. That's a great point. The death of the individuality of a character in four and six. And what part of why nine is so amazing because it brought it back was in six, every character was unique. They all had their own ability. They could all learn magic from espers, but every character had a definitive ability and skill and you could tailor your party to what you enjoyed the most. Seven began and then 10 epitomized the, uh, the homogenization of all of your characters. Outside of a limit break, what what was different about characters in battle? 
I mean, the weapons, we let weapons, and that's do it. Everything. Like, Their stat yeah. distributions were theoretically like a little different, but not enough to matter. Like, that, yeah, that that that's basically superficial differences at that point. Yeah. But like in seven, every character could do everything, and the more I played, the more I was like, well, then why have different characters? Like, there's. It, it it bothered me and it continues to bother me. And then with each subsequent Final Fantasy game that did a system similar to that, I, I began to hate it. I, I I love when characters are unique and differentiated and you can you build your party based on your preferences and not which character has the higher evolved materia of mug. Mug <laughs> mug. I remember the mug materia. Um I mean and- when you can the, the material system lets you autopilot the game with Knights of the Round and Mimic. So you just go ba- make a sandwich and go do some chores. And when you come back, you might have killed Ruby Weapon. I don't know. <laughs> Ooh. But the material well, it, system, I'm glad you like it, John. Your opinion is valid. But for me, the material system was one of the biggest negatives Final Fantasy. Like story, character issues aside, uh, the material system is the real concrete reason why I just cannot get on board with the final fantasy 7 love train so there's I feel like i want to hear from uh more from nat yeah mm, what specifically just spitball go crazy oh, okay right. um god i just i mean i i didn't play as much either like i'm also like rep that i stopped midway through so i i don't think i have much to say but the materia system in comparison to like a lot of people hate on the final fantasy eight draw system but i find the materia system even more boring and just i didn't like it i I don't know the only thing that i really like about this game is the music i think that's something that you can't take away from it but that's about it i i actually enjoyed crisis core more than the main game. crisis core was great i kind of like advent children Sometimes I love the children too. I sort I of hate that the whole thing is just like a movie for Cloud to sit there and feel angsty about himself while yeah. all the women in his life do all the hard work. But also, I think Tifa's a fucking badass in that movie. So yeah. I actually really like that movie. So I like I tend to like the side material of Final Fantasy VII more yeah. than the actual main game. Dirge of Cerberus weird. was a better yeah. game. So Can I, I want to just... be I want to be positive about cer- some aspects of Final Fantasy VII. Um, I have because, one positive thing when you're done, Derek. Yeah, because so I, yeah, as as Nat said, the music it's got a fantastic soundtrack. Final Fantasy is known for having fantastic soundtracks, and Seven continues to deliver in that regard and has some very standout pieces. Um, one of the more memorable standard battle themes and like generic boss battle themes, I think, in the series. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, I, it, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I don't okay. know how, that I really like Sephiroth as a villain, <laughs> um, so I don't have the attachment. But I think One Winged Angel is a, a really good musical piece. Yeah. Um, I think aesthetically, right? Aerith's, I, Aerith's theme is the finest piece. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a good. there's a difference between the aesthetics and the graphics, if I can make that clear. And I think aesthetically, there's a lot to like about Final Fantasy VII's like technology and its creature design. Um, you know, and going for kind of a more modern like costume design on a lot of characters. And I like a lot of that, even if I think that it was executed on poorly. I don't think it's aged well at all. Um, but I think aesthetically it's very pretty. Um, and there's a lot of really good concepts and story beats to the main overall story to the point where I actually wonder, like some of my biggest criticisms are, are that I, I didn't really find myself attached to any of the characters. Um, you know, and like the story beats often didn't land for me or come across with the emotional impact they needed to. And I wonder how much of that would be fixed with just a rescripting, like, you know, because a big part of why six succeeded as well as it did was a really, really fantastic translation and script. Um, and I sit here 2020 never. Yeah, I know. Right. Um, so I find myself wondering like how much of what I dislike about seven like even we talk about some of the more problematic elements about uh, the way Barrett is portrayed. How much of that is just our script, well, like yeah, which is I bad will. and has never really been fixed, and is one of the the few Final Fantasy like official scripts that is now just flat out wrong, right? Like there's character names that have been changed since yeah. then that haven't been updated right in newer releases. 
Yeah, I will 100% play this remake because I think that fixing the writing and fixing the, like, not having this weird, clunky movement bullshit will solve about at least yeah. half of my issues with it. Movement, world traversal in the, so, you know, Final Fantasy VII did that thing where you had the pre-rendered backgrounds and you moved around on it, and, and, and 8 and 9 did the same thing, and plenty of other, like, Resident Evil did it, but the thing is, the actual pathing, like, the traversable areas and the design of your your environments in seven was very clunky for that pre-rendered background style. So yeah, like doorways would be kind of awkward to approach. Um, roads and paths would lead in kind of weird directions. It was not, and I'll, I'll give them a sort of a pass because it was very early for that style. Well, but then again, like when did resident evil bad hit? opinion, legend yeah. of dragon did it better. Ooh, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. better game. So yes, thank you, Fit. One, one, no. Um, but, <laughs> but you know, one of one of my most, you guys will love this. One of my most vivid memories of Seven actually was not playing the game itself, but I had the strategy guide, and um, and there was a big picture of Tifa on it, right? And my mom finds it. I don't like where it, this is going. You know, my mom oh my it, god, my mom, John! <laughs> My mom brings it to me and she says, John, John, is this a porno game? Oh my and God. I was like, no, mom, no, please don't ever say that again. Like, no, no, no. But, but, but it, it is emblematic of just how problematic some of the character designs in this game were. Like you, like you look at a character like, like Aerith had great character design. Yeah. I love her character design. Then you have Tifa. And I was like, what? Yeah, I like Tifa like, more like, as a really character, but design-wise, on <laughs> and and there's a there's a there's a there's, a, there's an import store. It's where I got these Chrono Trigger this Chrono Trigger stuff uh, that I have on my desk uh, near where I live. And I went in there the other day to pick up my you know I was like oh I'm gonna go get that Xenogears figure, and they have a uh, a statue of Tifa in there, and like and like I saw it and I was like. God, that's problem. Like, holy shit! Like, like her later redesigns are really good. Like, I think she's an extremely yeah. cool character in the later stuff that she's done. But yeah, that initial bleh. like, literally, my mom was like, "John, is this a porno game?" And I'm just like, "No, mom." It's <laughs> is not. your mom like, Adam God. Sandler? No, but then she talks like that's you know, John. John, what Red. are you doing? Like. No, what? I just uh. Are you fucking raising your hand again, Finn? No, Stop I'm, that. I'm just pointing up to Reb. He's, he's oh, emoting. She's above me. Uh, you said you had Derek's something above positive you. you wanted to say? Yes, I have one positive thing to say about this game, and that it kind of bounces off what Derek said. The enemy designs are really yeah. good in a weird I had totally forgotten that I loved this about this game, um, but I, I did love it, like, for the, you know, however many hours I played it. And then when the remake came out, there was this, uh, Imgur, uh thread or reddit thread that kind of went around and you should google it because i i like laughed so hard i cried the title is the big list of bizarre final fantasy 7 enemies that i hope are still in the remake but almost absolutely will not be in any capacity <laughs> and it's just it's just this giant album of final fantasy enemies and they're, they're so fucking ridiculous hedgehog pie or get the fuck oh out. my yeah. god manhole <laughs> yeah, like, um, well, and, and that's the thing. Brain right? like, pod, what the fuck I, is I, that? I, I, I love how I you're walking through Shinra on. headquarters, you know, and you're like, you're assaulting Shinra headquarters because, you, you know, you're trying to, you know, you're you're trying to save Aerith, you know, because that's what you do in Final Fantasy VII, you save females. Um, and and you, you're you running up all the stairs and you're fighting soldiers and like fucking hedgehog pies. And I'm right. like, why are yeah. they here? Like, dorky why? face? What the hell are dorky these? Face, these are yeah. amazing. I don't want them to change any of these. No. I mean, oh I, I think that they gained like some personality just due to the, the ridiculous kind of the clunky blocky style that the game is in, which I hate in every, like I hate what Cloud's arm, Cloud's arms look so fucking stupid. Um, but the, yeah, the enemies game are is funny. Popeye. And they're just gonna, they're gonna lose all that personality in the remake. I don't think there's any way they can be anywhere near as funny as they were. But God, I, I bet they're so original. I mean, they're not anything. I mean, they're not like fucking kobolds. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll give. I got one more positive thing. Oh, you go first, Finn. No, I just wanted to say something positive to join in because I don't want my only statement in this to be how much I hate the materia system. No. But <laughs> um, one thing I did think Final Fantasy VII did really well was uh its pacing and its breaking up of the gameplay structure and giving you a lot of variety whether or not they're silly or not but giving you the snowboard mini game or that uh kind of tower defense strategy mini game oh that thing was terrible the chocobo racing and the breath 
in depth of its side quests and optional content and the the set pieces that Final Fantasy VII gave you, I think it did those things really well. I like no d- hard disagree on that one. Like, That's I, fair. I, I'm not saying that they were executed well. I'm saying I enjoyed that they existed to break up the standard RPG gameplay to to kind of just give it more variety. But can yeah. we? Can so, we talk so about Sephiroth before I was going to say, so let's Sephiroth. end let's end this discussion on well, Sephiroth. Can I do my one one more thing real quick? Absolutely fan. not, Derek. No. Okay. Well, so, no, fine. Please go ahead. Um, so one other thing I want to give Seven credit for is Seven better than I feel like any of the games that came before it to me. Um, really did good at um giving you the weird, surprising sort of like. Oh, this is a secret. This is a secret boss. This is a weird thing that I yeah. I didn't have to find. Uh, the weapons um, are like the quintessential example now of yeah. you know weird secret super bosses um, that you have to seek out and do kind of esoteric things to find and require some really interesting strategy to actually beat or or are built to resist some of your your standard like DPS strategies. Um, and that's one of the really strong things about the PlayStation trilogy in general. So I've got to give Seven credit for really kind of starting that trend through the PS1 era of having really strong, like, secret and optional, like, boss and, um, like, side quest material to a degree we lost afterwards, honestly. So so can Is we... It time to talk about Mama's Boy? The, so, the... so let's end the conversation by all agreeing that Sephiroth is the single most overrated character in JRPG Holy history. Holy yes. fuck, yes. Agreed. Hard agreed. Like, I don't understand the fascination with this guy. Like, he's fine. Yeah. You know, like, he's a mo- He's just a pretty boy who's upset about it his mom. It comes off a trend of liking anime boys with long silver hair. It's, yeah. It's a fucking he tragic anime boy with long silver hair. hair. I, I mean, yes, it is fair. Yeah. Yeah. It's a personified but, mommy but, issue with a really long sword. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, I just, like, I don't know, like, looking back on it, like, Kefka is just such a stronger villain because because he's what like you know I think I think it was Rebecca who said it like he doesn't need a motivation to to do what he's doing you know like like Kefka's motivation is that he just he loves chaos and he loves he loves destroying things like Sephiroth is one of like they tried to make him sympathetic you know like you know oh the world made me what I am you know and now I'm gonna have revenge in the world for making me what I am but Sephiroth just comes across as so incredible just a big old crybaby like i just can't Mm -hmm. i i just you know and and natalie i'm with you like like there is such a like well you know ask 90 percent of the fan base what the best musical piece in the entire series is and it's always one winged angel and i'm like why like no like his like it's good good, but it's not just like sephiroth like he's fine it's yeah good but it's not the best i consider sephiroth to be a, the prime example uh like let, like let's talk about the like the final boss battle i consider him the fight against sephiroth to be just the apex of jrpg overindulgence when it comes to stuff like this like you know like his supernova attack literally wipes out the like you got to sit through it every time for five minutes where he destroys and the all system. the planets get destroyed the entire solar system collapses on itself and then like it takes like two th- like like they're, they're like oh man they're like uh, let me down a potion and and I'm okay yeah and, and, and so like which is why I really love the final boss fight in Final Fantasy 15 so much because it's just you, you know you, you you versus another guy like not everything has to be a giant demon angel in a JRPG and and I feel like Sephiroth was them just throwing everything. At the you know like everything in the kitchen sink into their final boss fight and I, just, I I felt like they tried too hard to make it like the final boss fight in Final Fantasy VI because it that's essentially what it was yeah he's just an angel in a in a, with a heavenly background I'll say, they and, threw everything but good boss visual design at him because he's one of the most boring like the final Sephiroth is is I think one of the most boring Final Fantasy like major boss designs you know you look at the almost like eldritch kind of ways that you when you fight um like zero miss or neo x death or you know like kefka's uh final version is is this beautiful weird you know super detailed uh kind of creature i think that um ultimacy final form and necron have these really interesting designs and i think sephiroth's 
Like they just took even his most monstrous form and stuck him out of cloud with wings. Yeah, and they're like, here you go. Uh, like this is the final boss. So I, I I don't know, and it, that's just how I feel about Sephiroth. And like you know, you say that in the you know in the Final Fantasy fan community, people it, immediately jump on you. Yeah. But but I. But just, what does he have going for him aside nothing. from the fact that he's the villain in the in what is most people's first Final Fantasy? And it's a it's a good I I put it you in it. like the middle. But like I, I have never if I press somebody on like what is actually good about Sephiroth, what is what is interesting or unique about his character about his motivations about his design about what he can do like what makes him notable and not just something that a middle schooler drew on you know in in this the pages of his notebook because it's he's pretty boring he's just a guy in a trench coat with a really long weeaboo sword like you know I feel like they tried really like He's he's the opposite of Kefka in that they they were very clear about Kefka's motivations and that he doesn't particularly have any. Um, but he's like the exact opposite. I feel like Sephiroth, even I mean, not just in Final Fantasy VII, but over the years. I mean, I do love like like Natalie and I said, I love like all the most of the kind of extra media that's come up around Final Fantasy VII, but I also feel like they've tried way too hard to, like, bloat out his motivations. And, like, oh, here's another random backstory fact for the Wikipedia that you didn't know about Sephiroth, and it makes it <laughs> even more tragic. They kingdom-hearted. Yeah! yeah. yeah. He's, like, the original yeah. Ansem or something. It, it's, it, is, it is the beginning and, and the origin point of everything I grew to dislike about Kingdom Hearts is in Sephiroth and Final Fantasy VII, to be honest with you. Well, I think uh, I think I think with that we have reached the end of our Final Fantasy VII discussion. Um, uh, simply because I'm I'm trying to not not the you know do another hour long Final Fantasy VI discussion here because there's still more things about six I could discuss. Uh, <laughs> but I want to thank I want to thank Natalie for joining us once again. Thank you so much for being here, Natalie. Thank you for having me. And uh, and I'm we glad to share my negative Final Fantasy VII opinion. Oh, just wait till we talk about Final Fantasy VIII. If you want to talk about negative, <laughs> yeah. opinions. Um, we'll fight you, John. You will. You'll. Yeah. Yeah. You want, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll um, lose. And uh, and yeah, you will you will lose terribly. Um, so we will see you guys next week with Final Fantasy VIII.